All right, guys, there's one thing that I want to talk about today, and that's this, okay? We need to talk about the prevalence of twists and turns in WWE storytelling, right? Um, I didn't mention it in my Elimination Chamber video, but personally, I didn't particularly like the uh, main event. Now, the match itself was okay, but the problem is this. These prolonged periods within the match where storytelling needs to be told inorganically, right? Like Jey Uso coming out and having a moment of like, oh, what am I going to do? How about nothing? This is a fucking wrestling match, right? These things should not happen in wrestling matches unless one of two things happens. This is, It's the end of the match, and this logically leads to the end, which, to be fair, that's kind of what happened, right? Or two, right? It happens before or after the segment, uh, after the match, I should say. That's the only way that you should be allowed to do these things. Because otherwise, you must respect the, the kayfabe, the, the philosophy of wrestling, which is that a match is happening. A competitive contest is happening, right? But because WWE has gotten worse and worse at storytelling, instead of doing something good with the, these, these, you know, moments, right? Instead of doing something good, they just ruin them. They rush them and they overproduce them. You know, you got to think about some of the great matches in WrestleMania history, or not even WrestleMania history, but just generally, right? For example, I, I mention this match all the time. Edge versus Kane, you know, to for the, the winner of like the Gold Rush tournament or whatever, right? Where Edge, like, is revealed to be working with Lita all along, and Lita betrays Kane. That's good storytelling, right? Because it's like, number one, people didn't expect that they would go that far, just because, like, it was clearly paralleling the Matt Hardy storyline, Right? That was a little bit weird, right? And it opened the door for Matt Hardy to return, which was one of the greatest moments, in my opinion, in Raw history, right? But that's how you do it, right? Or uh, Trish Stratus turning on Jericho and aligning with Christian at WrestleMania, whatever, 17, whatever the fuck it was. That's what I'm saying. The, like, the storytelling needs to happen in short bursts that impact the ending of the match. Not Jey Uso inserts himself in the middle, right? It has really no bearing on, on the match, because at the end of the day, whether Juso came out or didn't come out, Sami Zayn would have would have missed the spear, and then Roman Reigns would have beat him with a chair anyways, right? It doesn't matter that he, in missing the spear, he happened to hit Jey Uso. That doesn't change the, 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 the philosophy of the match at all. So that's what I'm getting at. Storytelling needs to happen outside of the ring, and very, very rarely, it needs to happen within the ring. The storytelling sh outside of the ring should be so good and well-developed that the in-ring mannerisms... Then substitute for storytelling, right? So, for example, like depending on the storyline, you know, one wrestler may want to win the match really quick. But if it's like a grudge match, you know, you might have someone pin someone and then lift their shoulders up before the two count. I mean, before the three count and, you know, uh, put them through further punishment, right? To tell the story. These are storytelling elements that are small and non-intrusive. The majority of the storyline has to happen around this, right? Now, the storyline with Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns was not very well developed because up until the last pay-per-view, Sami Zayn was pretty much aligned with Roman Reigns, right? Like the, the Monday Night Raw before this happened, Sami Zayn basically tag team with Jey Uso, which I understand the underpinnings are a little bit different, in order to preserve the championships for the Usos, right? So you see what I'm saying? It, it, it's not really well well done, if you if, if you ask me, right? The, the problem that I have with this kind of storytelling is that eventually it veers off into the absurd, right? And we get these cinematic, you know, cinematic wrestling matches. And now it's a thing, cinematic wrestling. I don't want to see any of this crap, okay? I don't want to see good storylines like we had in the past where everyone in the company was part of something, right? And if they weren't part of something, they were part of some generic storyline about who's going to be the hardcore champion this week or some horseshit like that. And even that one had storylines... Uh, like, in between. Do you motherfucks remember? There was this forgotten storyline, but it was a great storyline. The storyline was Spike Dudley, remember him, Kaksekis, and Molly Holly were secretly in love, right? But it was like a Romeo and Juliet type of situation. But the Holly cousins, Crash and Bob, Hardcore Holly, right? They didn't want Molly Holly to deal with the damn Dudleys. Likewise, Bubba Ray and Devon did not want Spike to deal with the damn Hollies, right? It was a great storyline. It was like, it was an undercard storyline. It was a love story, right? The real storyline was uh, Spike and Molly Holly, but the, 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 the combat part of it was the Hollies versus the Dudleys, right? And Devon and Bubba Ray yelling at Spike for like losing his mind basically, right? This is a good way, for example, to put your undercard jobbers or your tag team guys in storylines. When was the last time that we had a tag team storyline? When was the last time we had a tag team match at a pay-per-view that wasn't for the titles, 
that had an actual storyline. Like one tag team hates another tag team. Nowadays, the tag teams just exist. They just exist and periodically they get matched up with other tag teams and they just have a feud. A feud over nothing. Like for example, Imperium versus uh, the Seamus people. Whatever the fuck they're called. The, 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 what are they called? I don't know it's with bees. The, the British rogues or whatever the fuck it's called. You know what I'm talking about, right? Um, the, the brutish brawlers, whatever. The, the brawling brutes. I think that's it, right? The brawling brutes. Yeah, that's what, what a shitty name. But anyways, like that, that storyline is not a storyline. It's just like, all right, we have, these people are three. These people are four. Let's have a fight each other. Great. Fantastic. You know, how about put a woman in the middle and like Seamus is in love with her. That's always Gunter. That makes it better. It makes it better to have a reason as to why these people are fighting, right? C- compare and contrast that versus, in my opinion, one of the most entertaining six-man tag matches of all time, Hardy Boys and Lita versus the Radicals, Eddie Guerrero, Perry Saturn, and Dean Malenko. In the whole the whole story was Dean Malenko wants Lita. She doesn't want him back, so he wants to beat her up, right? And in the end, it's Lita and Dean Malenko. Lita does a few moves. Dean Malenko puts her in the cloverleaf. She taps out. Dean Malenko wins, right? Great elimination match. Great storyline for Dean Malenko, who's a guy who doesn't even need storylines because he's boring. But the point is, they're trying. They're trying to put storylines even for their undercard guys. Nowadays, we get like one storyline a year, and it's the same thing as a year and a half ago. Storylines are the backbone of wrestling. Why in the blue hell would I even want to watch wrestling if they didn't have storylines, right? I don't care about the actual the actual sport, quote unquote, right? I don't care about it at all. Sports, in my personal opinion, are usually extremely boring unless there's a storyline, right? That's why, motherfuckers, like things like boxing, UFC, even football and basketball try really hard to emulate storylines when they can. That's why Conor McGregor is more successful than fucking Robert Whittaker, right? Even though Robert Whittaker is like a million times better of a fighter. It doesn't matter, right? The point is people are in there for the storylines. And wrestling, I've said this a thousand times and I'll say it again. Wrestling has the unique positionality to determine what the storyline is going to be. They're actors fundamentally. You can change the storyline, you know? But when I see... When I see like an article, they're like, oh, WB trials. There's like 30 people that are trying out to be WB superstars. And it'll be like, oh, this is like Quan Bo. Quan Bo is a professional wrestler from China. Like, what the fuck cares? You know what I'm saying? Why are you even hiring professional wrestlers? Or, or they'll be like, like Markel Patterson is like a collegiate football player. Johnny Smith is a bodybuilder. Why the fuck are you hiring football players, bodybuilders, and wrestlers? You should be hiring people out of drama school, right? That have muscles. That's all you need and have some base athleticism. You know what I'm saying? The Rock, Stone Cold, even Triple H to an extent. These are not technical geniuses, right? Triple H, eh, a little bit. You know, he's pretty good in the ring. But Stone Cold and The Rock, objectively, are two of the worst in-ring guys ever, right? Stone Cold had like three moves, you know? Nobody talks about that. They always talk about Goldberg having three moves. But Stone Cold had like three moves. The Rock had like five moves. You know, his entire career, he had like five moves. The Spine Buster, the Sharp Shooter, the People's Elbow, the Rock Bottom, and the DDT. That's all he had in the jumping clothesline. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's all he did his entire career. But it doesn't matter. He's one of the goats. Because it, it's never been about the in-ring stuff. It's always been about the storylines. And nobody was better than storylines than Stone Cold, The Rock, and, and all these other people. Even people like Eddie Guerrero. Why do you think people appreciate Eddie Guerrero more than they appreciated Chris Benoit? Even back in the day. Now, obviously, it's because Chris Benoit is a fucking murderer, but you understand what I'm saying. Or Kurt Angle was always more appreciated than Chris Benoit, right? Because they're, Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle are charismatic, and they're entertaining, and they're good at storylines. Chris Benoit is just the guy you plug in there, right? He doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? That's the idea. That's the idea, cuckolds. And nowadays, we have, instead of storylines, that... that revolve around the people participating these are just generic storylines where you can plug someone in and the the greatest example of this is the number one storyline of all time according to some this Sami Zayn's bloodline storyline it's the same exact thing as the Jey Uso is going against Roman Reigns storyline it is the exact same thing in fact that proves that it, that Sami Zayn and Jey Uso bring absolutely nothing to the storyline because you can replace S- Sami Zayn with Jey Uso as they did before and as they're going to do again, it looks like, right? And that's all you need. You can just replace them with the other one and you have the same storyline, right? Nobody cares. There's no difference. There's nothing about Sami Zayn that makes the storyline better or worse, right? You could have done the same thing with, with Kevin Owens. You could have done the same thing with Jericho. You could have done the same thing with anybody else, really, right? 
I mean, not Jericho, because Jericho just wouldn't wouldn't be a lackey for anyone because he's Jericho. But you understand what I'm saying, right? The point is, Cucks, we need storylines. And without storylines, wrestling is doomed forever. This is why this WrestleMania is going to be the worst. What's the storyline of Cody Rhodes coming back? Oh, he got, he got injured and he came back. So what, motherfucks? So what? Matt Riddle is injured. He's going to come back. All right, is he going to get a push? You know, that's not, that's not good enough. He was injured, then he came back, so he gets a push. But Angelo Dawkins was injured, he came back. Nobody gave a flying fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like Dash and Dawson, each were injured for like a year. They came back, nobody gave a flying fuck. You know what I'm saying? That's the point. You, you, you have to have an actual storyline, not something that actually happened in real life. Oh, he got injured, now he's back. So he's, he's going to win. Oh, Cody's going to do it, finally. Get the fuck out of here. This WrestleMania is going to be the worst one ever. Mark my words, cucko.